Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is the relationship between social anxiety disorder and the cluster A personality disorders? That would be paranoid, schizoid, and schizotypal personality disorders. Now we talk about social anxiety disorder. We're talking about a disorder where we see fear and anxiety in social situations. Now this can be in performance situations only, like public speaking, or in a variety of situations. The fear we often see associated with social anxiety disorder is a fear of negative evaluation. We also see with social anxiety disorder, there would be clinically significant distress or clinically significant impairment. Now when we talk about the cluster A personality disorders, we're talking about the odd eccentric cluster as listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. And as I mentioned, there are three personality disorders in this cluster, paranoid, schizoid, and schizotypal. With paranoid personality disorder, we see distrust and suspiciousness of others, believing that others have a malevolent motive. So they have a motivation to do harm to an individual. With schizoid personality disorder, we see a pattern of detachment from social relationships. We also see a restricted range of emotions with schizoid personality disorder. Now with schizotypal personality disorder, we see social and interpersonal deficits, discomfort with close relationships, and cognitive and perceptual distortions and eccentricities. One theory about the cluster A personality disorders is that they have a relationship to schizophrenia. Schizophrenia may be on a continuum, and cluster A may be a position on that continuum. It would be a little different for each of the personality disorders in cluster A. So when we think of social anxiety disorder, oftentimes we don't really think of the cluster A personality disorders first. We would think of one of the cluster C personality disorders, specifically avoidant personality disorder. And avoidant personality disorder is the only personality disorder listed as a potential differential diagnosis in the DSM under social anxiety disorder. Now, of course, a diagnostic classification that we consider as a potential differential diagnosis would be different than merely an association between two disorders. And that's what we're really talking about here when we talk about social anxiety disorder and the cluster A personality disorders. We're not necessarily talking about a differential diagnosis, just an association between the disorders. Now, even when looking at this way, just a relationship between disorders, it still doesn't seem like there's a close connection between social anxiety disorder and the cluster A personality disorders. For example, with social anxiety disorder, we sometimes think of characteristics like behavioral inhibition, shyness, and submissiveness. But really, there may be a subtype of social anxiety disorder that's not in the DSM that's characterized by mistrust, anger, and hostility. So we do know that social anxiety disorder appears to have many different potential subgroupings, and this could be one of them. And this would seem much more closely related to the cluster A personality disorders. So to help answer this question about the relationship between social anxiety disorder and cluster A personality disorders, I'm using a study that was published by O'Toole and colleagues in 2014. They looked at a few different angles about this relationship and had some interesting findings. But before we get to those findings, what does research before that study tell us about this relationship? Well, we know there's a higher prevalence of cluster A personality disorder traits in social anxiety disorder, particularly paranoid and schizoid traits. So these disorders share similar symptoms, but we think there's a different mechanism in place. So for example, with detachment or a discomfort in the presence of other individuals. With social anxiety disorder, we would think of this as related to a fear of embarrassment or humiliation. With paranoid personality disorder, we would think of this as more suspiciousness or hostility. And with schizotypal personality disorder, more being uncomfortable in close relationships. So again, similar symptoms, but different mechanisms. So the findings from this particular study indicated that severe social anxiety disorder predicted more schizotypal symptoms, a bit of an unexpected finding. Severe social anxiety disorder symptoms did not predict more paranoid personality disorder symptoms. However, the relationship between social anxiety disorder and paranoid personality disorder was indicated as quite strong. There's a strong relationship between these two disorders. 
In particular, this relationship was quite strong for this subtype of social anxiety disorder, the subtype that has mistrust, anger, and hostility, and paranoid personality disorder. So how do we explain these findings? Well, there are a few different theories we could have here about this relationship, specifically with the paranoid personality disorder traits and social anxiety disorder. It could be that paranoid personality disorder traits represent a risk factor for social anxiety disorder. So if somebody has paranoid personality disorder traits, they're more likely to focus on negative reactions from other people, and that could lead to social anxiety disorder. Another theory is that paranoid personality disorder traits could be secondary to social anxiety disorder. So the social anxiety disorder would come first, and then the paranoid personality traits would develop. Now, with this theory, it would be because cognitive distortions could become rigid over time. So this really speaks to the theory about the relationship between states and traits. When we talk about personality disorders and personality traits, oftentimes we think of this theory about this relationship between a state, this is emotions or feelings or thoughts that are maintained temporarily, and a trait, which is a characteristic we would see frequently over time. And one of the theories is that if a state is maintained repeatedly, it can become a trait. And that's what we're really looking at with this theory with cognitive distortions perhaps becoming rigid over time. A third theory that could explain this relationship would be that paranoid personality disorder traits and social anxiety disorder are really manifestations of the same underlying condition. So here we think that a difficulty in determining the feelings of others could really lead to both paranoid personality disorder traits and social anxiety disorder. I hope you found this description of cluster A personality disorders and social anxiety disorder to be interesting. Thanks for watching.